Yo, yo, Colin here. Let's get into the Better Human newsletter. You can get over at betterhumans.substack.com. Man, I've been deep in the trenches working the past couple months, taking my company back, Wild Foods, and but I, I keep getting called back into content. Like I, I go and I do my little TikToks every day because it's fun and I get it's like an outlet, right? And I keep getting called back to do this. I keep feeling the need to just fight back, <laughs> fight the ever encroaching collectivism, the identity politics, the lack of critically thinking, critical thinking, the, the lack of just sovereign humans. Like we have so many weak ass humans and, and primarily weak men because weak men are what keep weak women in check. Weak, toxic women, and they exist. And there's also weak, toxic men, and they're all culpable, absolutely. But it is the destruction of strong men and the marginalizing of men and the emasculating of men over, over the past 30 to 40 years, in conjunction with, of course, big food, big pharma, and all these different things, the state, right? All these things are connected. Liberal colleges, the co-opting of co uh, school of education, or what is it, not school of education, the um, public... I think it was Carter that created the Department of Education. And since then, America's, we went from like first or second in education to like 24th in the world. And that should, just one more example, the, when the state gets involved in something, the state makes it worse. But what we need is more strong humans. I'm a man, so I can speak most to men because that's my experience. And I believe that more strong men is the answer to most things. I mean, strong men are already the foundation of everything that we built ever and of course at the same time right to be fair women and strong women that raise the next generation are absolutely integral to that whole process to all of it right so, so you can't pick one out they're exactly connected it's like yin and yang right it's like night and day you cannot pull one apart they define each other but they are absolutely different in some ways they're opposites in some ways they're very similar and so much of the modern propaganda is trying to convince you that we're all the same or we should do the same things or you know like women should go get jobs and make money and they shouldn't stay home because that has less value than making money yet they go you know what be an accountant and make like 50 60k a year and be able to afford all their own stuff and then they're miserable they have no family no community no meaning which is a very big thing some women it's perfect for some women want to be you know quote unquote girl bosses that's fine the point is given the opportunity to do that and hopefully they do it with for good reasons. Hopefully they do it because they've considered it. Hopefully they listen to the feedback. Hopefully if they are miserable, they don't convince themselves that, well, I just need to make more money, do more things and fall into the trap that even men fall into, a lot of men fall into. For a lot of women, having a job or a career and doing these things is not going to make them long-term happy, or at least it's not going to make them as happy as they would be if they had meaning and purpose and community and all the things that we know humans need. And now I'm gonna stop you right there because if you're a woman and listen to this, you might think that I'm saying something that rubs you the wrong way, or you might think I'm saying that women sh should should or should not do this. It's like you cannot even make a nuanced statement without morons coming in the comments and saying stupid things because they cannot remove themselves from the dissonance created by hearing something they don't like to hear. That's foundationally what the internet's about. It's about inflammatory, confirmation bias, and people attacking you and other things, and making it about race and all this baiting bullshit. Because again, that's what the algorithms love. They love engagement. If you hear anything that I just said and you have a problem with it, then what you should do, because you can do whatever you want. I don't care what you do. And whatever you do will not affect me, okay? But it will affect you. It will affect your life and your future. If you cannot hear a nuanced few statements like I've just made, because you want to make it all or nothing, black or white, 100% or zero. Like you want to make it a binary polarizing thing. And it's not. It's not binary. It's not polarizing. It's literally nuanced because there's a spectrum to all these things. There's a bell curve, right? Everybody falls on different bell curves in different ways. But there are, as the bell curve shows, a bulk of people end up being somewhere around what makes the most sense for human nature and biology and sex and gender and things like this, right? Okay. So it, the point is, though, if you hear something that you don't like, then you need to pull in that thread for yourself because <laughs> nothing I say, my opinion should never, ever upset you. My opinion, anybody's opinion, should be a way for you to potentially learn something, right? Do what Bruce Lee suggested. He said, take what is useful, discard what is not, and add what is uniquely your own. And that's what we have to do with everything because for every thing in your life that you don't do that, if you blindly accept something, 
if you blindly accept the narrative because that's what everyone else does, if you blindly accept what the experts tell you on TV because they're just experts, if you blindly accept what the government tells you because they're the government, you will be making a mistake because they are never fully correct. They might be correct in like one or a couple areas, or they might be completely wrong because they're paid off, bought, and they have a different agenda than you, right? Okay. So listen to what I said and what I'm saying. And I will try to clearly, clearly elucidate it because I know not everyone has time. Not everyone's going to like listen to every single sentence and maybe watch it a couple of times. So they really clearly are like understand what's, what's being said. I understand that. I get that. Right. But that's also even more reason why you cannot jump to conclusions and let your primal brain brain and your dissonance come in and basically make you blind to something that might be useful for you. Okay. I'm saying that Women are designed to be social creatures, extra social. Men are social too, but women are extra social. I don't need to convince you of that. Like, just literally use your brain, okay? Look at yourself, look at others, look how you've grown up, etc. right? Women are social creatures. This is because they did the majority of the child rearing. Now, I should say they do all the child birthing and they do the majority of the child rearing. And in the hunter-gatherer setting, right, as humans live for the bulk of our existence, which is like 190 to 250,000 years. We've only been living in cities for the last 10,000 years. It's literally a drop in the bucket, right? So we go back to our ancestors and we understand how they lived. And there are modern day hunter gatherers that we can look at that are healthy, thriving, happy. They have community, et cetera. And they don't need any of our material bullshit, right? So you look into, uh, what was I saying? Um, that's what women have done historically, okay? And their female psychology, their physiology even, is all set up to do that well. Now, I believe that a single mom or even like a single mom and father household with multiple kids is, is, is unnatural. Like we used to have community. They say it takes a village to raise a kid. That's because there always has been a village to raise a kid. There's been grandmothers and uncles and like literally every man in the tribe used to be the father or considered like an uncle to all the kids, okay? That's the most natural way is if you went in the woods and well, I mean, let's say you, you had like an off-grid community. I mean, in fact, the grid doesn't matter. Let's just say you had a community where you're very tight knit and you had like 30 families and you all were just like a big ass family. You're not related by blood, but that doesn't matter. You don't even have this idea that you should separate yourself based on blood. That's just another modern invention. That's literally passed down since we invented personal property and then men had paternity concern, which is also the origin of marriage, mind you, <laughs> which marriage has been a uh, economic contract, always has, always will be. And yet we try to pretend it's about like love and shit. It's not, it's literally economics. <clears throat> so, if you did that, if you lived in that setting, the average person would be so much happier than now. You could even give up like all your wealth. And if you just lived in that community and you lived a basic existence, you like spend a lot of time outside, you help with the food prep, you like tell stories around the fire, you play games, you run around, you know, 99% of humans in the modern environment right now would ha live better lives in that setting. And again, that's me saying you remove most of the economic everything. And I know this, like a lot of my goals in life are around getting enough money so that I can buy like a hundred acres and just have a bunch of people live there and be there all the time. <laughs> like that's my primary drive as a human. Now, of course, first it's security for the fam, etc. Then it's that. I've thought about these things. I've thought about what makes me happy. And it was has always been when I had a lot of friends around and we were just like, playing games, playing poker, doing stupid shit. We didn't have to be going to some exotic place. We have to be on a yacht. None of that shit matters. It's just people getting together and spending time with them. In our further and further isolated society, it's harder and harder to do. I mean, think about your adult relationships. How often are you spending time with adults? You might see them like once a week for a couple hours. You have coffee or whatever. Maybe get a workout in and then you're off to back being in your own isolated concrete cages so that you can go on a screen and spend most of your time looking at other people and like i it's it's kind of crazy actually like i think they're going to look back at this time historians of the future and, and they're going to be like damn like that was a pivotal moment and those people that su like suffered through that that was hard i get that like we're going through some major major evolution right now as a species people don't really understand that or think about that because they don't think long term because they're too busy just being plugged into the matrix so what i've been saying and my, I feel like my call to action every single time I get in front of a mic or, or, or a screen is like, I want to help people be strong-minded, be, but be better humans. And the way I define that is think for yourself, live for yourself and build your own life, like completely and utterly owning of everything in your life. 
maximum ownership. I call it max truth, max ownership. You take complete control, everything. Nobody outside you changes who you are, what you do, what you think, what you say, right? And nobody outside you, nobody outside yourself is responsible for your health, for your success, for how you live, etc. Nobody. That's what I'm called to do every time. Every time I talk, every time I think about this, every time I like do a piece of content, I'm like, how can I help build better humans? Even when I talk about politics, I'm trying to do it from a perspective that like, stop trusting the state. <laughs> stop trusting these so-called experts. They don't care about you. So, in, in, in this newsletter here, we have stop giving away your mind. That's uh, very on point. Turn my screen save off. Okay, so, as I was saying about men and women, let me just kind of close that thought out. Um, let's see. Many women that will pursue the feminist idea that you should be this strong-minded, completely independent, only you, make all your own money, do all your own things, whatever, right? And in the modern world, you can do that because the opportunity is there, and that's great. That's what equality is all about. It's about equal opportunity. It's the equal outcome that's the problem. That's where it gets just destroyed. Like that's where it becomes taken from some giving to the other. That's when it becomes tyranny. Okay. And if you buy the feminist idea that, that that's, that's what you should do, you might do that and you might get successful and you might prove, you know, to you and other feminists that like, Oh yeah, you can do it too. But proving that and feeling good about that accomplishment is only going to last so long. And in most cases, it's not going to fulfill you. And this also applies to men too, because men fall into the modern trap of like more, 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 acquire resources, get fame, do all these different things, all in it, an attempt to get mates and to have lots of sex. Like that's the entire male prerogative, but that's nature. So like we shouldn't be upset about that. That just is what it is. But if you aren't careful, you get sucked into that. You get addicted to the game, to the making of the money, to getting of the fame or the likes or whatever. And then when you get enough to really feel like you've made it, you know, or like you make enough money so that you could actually be free or you get enough stuff, like expensive, fancy car. And you've been trading your time. You know, you've been trading a social life. You've been trading a family. Life, you've been doing all these different things because you've been going hardcore at it. Because again, that's what society tells you you're supposed to do. And then you wake up and you don't feel fulfilled. Okay. So again, this is not just a female thing. It's actually more applicable to men because men are the hunters and the go-getters and we have the desire to always build things and acquire resources, etc. And women have that less, but there are more and more women that are buying into this feminist propaganda that that's how they should live their life. And if, and the worst thing about that though on, on women is that this feminist pro propaganda that if you are a homemaker, if you stay home and raise children, that you are not contributing to society or you're just playing into some idea of a patriarchy or you're weak, that is the toxic lie. Okay. <laughs> I can tell you two kids with one on the way, women do. I don't want to say all, but like when I say all, it's kind of like an exaggeration, but women do all the work. The mother does all the work. And if you're lucky to have a community around you, and you have like grandmothers and aunts and uncles and like you have people around that can help. Like that's the way it should be. I absolutely believe that. But for the women out there that like the single moms or the, you know, the moms that do all, most of it because the dads that work all day or whatever, like absolute and utter respect and absolutely an integ integral to the future of humanity. So like you, you can't listen to anything I'm saying and pretend that I'm saying something that marginalizes women or anything like that or downplays what they do because that's not what's happening. I'm doing the exact opposite, right? <laughs> but again, this is also the division of labor. Men are better at going out, working, doing things, right? And that's why more men do that. Women are better at caring for children and raising them and being around them all the time and dealing with their many needs. Like when I spend time with the kids for a few hours, like I'm exhausted and she does that all day long. Like how? And then she's got to put them to sleep. Like what? How? But again, biology, she's better equipped for that than I am. And I'm better equipped to go out and have single-minded, aggressive, dogged focus to make money and build things. And so that's what we do. And like I said, bell curve, you will have a bell curve. Most women will do best with the family and children. 
they will have more satisfaction, happiness, and meaning and live better lives doing so. And then, like I said, bell curve though, there will be extremes. There will be some people that don't want children at all and all they care about is money and material things and traveling the world and being single, whatever, right? And then you have some people that are on the other end of the spectrum, which is, I mean, I guess, I don't know what the other end would be like. I don't know, but there's still the bell curve here because we're talking about a distribution of massive amount of people and you're going to have the majority of people here. You have some people here, some people here, okay? And that's true of men too. There are some men that are actually great stay-at-home dads and that can be and that want to do that. That's awesome, right? And there's some men that don't want to have anything to do with kids. They want to just literally commit their lives to their jobs and they don't, like they want to have kids or maybe they don't want to have kids. They just have kids and they don't want to invest any time into them. And that's unfortunate, but that is again just like – that's natural selection. That's just humanity. Now, I do believe there would be less men that did that if we lived in a group setting because when you're a part of the tribe, your tribe is your survival. And part of the survival of the tribe is raising offspring of the entire tribe, right? Because like, if you don't, you don't get food. If you don't, you might get kicked out. If you don't, you're definitely not getting sex. You're not getting mates. All right, let's skim through this real quick. Stop giving away your mind. All right, so the irony of our age is that they want you to believe that the world is unfair and not to get you, especially if your skin is a certain color or your gender. But that's a lie. They are using you. They are mind controlling you to look to them to be your savior. Nothing but propaganda. And it's not new. This is how the few have ruled the many since the dawn of civilization. You cannot control millions of people or a large part population if you're the few, if you're the elite, if you're the patricians. You can't do that if not through the mind, through ideas through mores, through what's acceptable, through the Overton window. That's how this stuff works. The few can never physically control the many. So the first forms of control grew out of religion and godness. Using the afterlife and sin effectively kept large masses of humans acting a certain way. The real irony now is how open and opportunity rich the world is. You can come from anywhere, look anyway, and if you provide value to others, to the marketplace, you can create any life you want. Religion doesn't matter, skin color doesn't matter, gender doesn't matter, looks don't matter. Value is the only thing that matters. Stop letting others control you. Stop letting others create hate and division in your mind. Stop letting others convince you you're a victim. You can have anything you want in life, but you won't until you take complete control of your mind. Pretty good, if I don't say so myself. I actually need to like reuse that. That's a good one. Okay, so... And I guess I got a few, yeah, there's a few things down here I'll cover real quick. Uh, this is a good post from my buddy from the Meat Mafia podcast. He's got a list. Meat, fruits, eggs, organs, oysters, mar marrow, raw dairy, raw honey, bone broth, orange juice, dark chocolate, fermented veggies, and then walk much, lift heavy, rest often, breathe more, sunbathe, create community this way. And then here's another example of political propaganda. All right. So just like terrorism, COVID, black versus white, all extremely low prevalence and sometimes imaginary issues, the politicians use, that politicians use to control your mind. Biden put out this post, white supremacy and all forms of hate-fueled violence have no place in America. Except what about black supremacy? What about Black Lives Matter and burning down businesses? What about all the violence that is supposedly okay because it's from these oppressed and marginalized groups? It's just unbelievable. And then he and then he says the typical, the, like the shit they use during COVID, like the absolute scam of the mind, the, the most insidious form of propaganda is, and probably what Goebbels and Hitler used when it came to the Jews. Failure to call it out is complicity. Silence is complicity. Okay, so again, like you putting a tweet out to call out these things, he's like, I mean, like we're talking a percent of a percent of a percent of the population is actually like would consider themselves white supremacists or whatever. Most people are not racist. I've seen a lot more racism from other groups than I have from white people, actually, <laughs> you know, and this idea that you're going to put a tweet out or you're going to call it out that you're going to prevent it, you're going to do something about it. You're full of shit. What are you talking about? What the hell's words going to do? It's not going to change anything. You're not doing anything with this virtue signaling tweet to pretend you care or that people should vote for you a certain way because you're a friend of the persons of color group or whatever. It's more propaganda. Complete and utter nonsense. And the same thing with the masks and all that stuff and the social distancing. It's like you have to do something 
that we deem as right or good or safe. And if you don't, then you're a part of the problem or you're a threat to this or danger. That collectivism bullshit is the same type of thinking you have when they were burning women for being witches, quote unquote. There were people that if they didn't like their neighbor or if there was a woman that maybe she was a little bit of a shut in and maybe she was kind of weird or whatever, they would basically say, oh, she's a witch. They would then, the inquisitors would then torture her until under pain of torture would admit to being a witch, mostly because she wanted the pain to stop. And then they would burn her alive at a stake. This is what humans are capable of. And it all stems from this type of propaganda. It's utterly disgusting. Like the fact that this is the shit you see in American politics, that the sitting president of the United States says stuff like this as nothing but a calculated, race baiting, grifting, political propaganda, fear mongering, bullshit narrative. That's all it is. And that is coming from the quote unquote most powerful man on the planet. This should disturb you. Really should. I mean, honestly, the next 20 years, it's going to be a miracle if we don't either descend into a civil war in America or we don't poke Russia enough or some other nuclear power, maybe China, and we don't have nuclear annihilation of the entire planet. That will be the big surprise to me. And that sucks because I have kids and it's just, it's just, it's just tragic. But this is human nature. This is all the complexity of the world with money and finances and politics and power and all the different struggles going on. And then you have now social media and algorithms, computers, <laughs> censorship. This is what you get when humanity goes through different epochs, different evolutions. Let's just hope we don't blow ourselves up first. And this one's a good one. Can you imagine selling a product that is so bad for you that you have to buy all the media in the entire world to try to sell it? And even the states to push it and mandate it? Fascism. Apparently, fascism nowadays is when you're well-read, you like women, and you lift weights. And you don't want to be around weirdos, and you don't want to be, and you just want to be left alone. That's what they're calling fascists today. <laughs> they're telling you shouldn't think for yourself, you shouldn't work out. They want you weak. They want you eating bugs, right? We all know it. Now, I don't really care because they're not gonna make me do shit. The only way they're gonna do any of these things is if they can convince enough people, and I don't think they're gonna do that. I think they're gonna fail. And I think the more that we they try to push, they try to push hard with COVID. And that worked for a while. And some people got mega rich. And some governments took more control, more power. Some politicians did more of that as well. But they're not going to be able to do that again. So they're going to have to think about what's the next big boogeyman. And that's why I'm so concerned about nuclear war. Because you're going to see, we already have a lot of warmongers in, in Washington. We already have that. You know, I think that's going to be the next thing where they can use it to grab power and they can use it to convince the masses. I mean, wartime is always, always going to benefit the few because they have the ultimate power. So, I mean, I don't even know what to call today's episode. How about stop giving away your mind? All right. Uh, if you like this, you can like, leave a comment, say something. I implore you to critically think for yourself. If something I ever said bothered you in any way, then take that as a sign to make your mind stronger because why are you letting other people disrupt you? And if you're going to cherry pick one thing I said and try to make some grand eloquent statement about it, which I see all the time in the comments, well, why don't you spend your time like reading a history book? Why don't you dig into what I said? Why don't you try to falsify it? How about that? Take something I said and try to really aggressively disprove it. Like go do some research, go, go read some history, you know, go disprove it. Instead of just leaving some emotional comment that is not based on anything other than your own bias. Because I'm just, I'm just over it. I'm over weak ass humans with their weak narratives, right? Like, I'm just so freaking over it. And you should be too. And if that's you and you're contributing to it, we all do to some extent. We're not, none of us are infallible. None of us are perfect. None of us are fully awake. We can only strive to be. And nobody ever says anything 100% accurate, right? Everything's going to be... Uh, exaggerated, embellished, sometimes a little bit wrong, a little bit right, some, sometimes somewhere in the middle, sometimes nuance, whatever. That's most things. So again, accept it and take maximum ownership of it and of your life. I'm out.